Hey guys, how you doing? <clears throat> Welcome everybody. Is there something down there? Okay, this is usually late for me. <clears throat> if you're wondering what I'm doing, I was just eating. Started my cheat day. So pray for me. By the grace of God. <clears throat> a little late. I don't want to be too loud. I don't want to be a distraction to my neighbors. And I'm waiting for my cat to show up. And again, I'm on StreamYard. I decided to do this because... Earlier, we had this brother from India who wanted me to do a live stream where it'd be early enough for him. So I said, I'll do one tonight, Lord willing. And secondly, the second reason why I'm doing a late <clears throat> one is because tomorrow, if the Lord wills. Now, for some of you, it's already tomorrow. For some of you, it's already Thursday. Is it? Yeah. If you check... My YouTube channel, tomorrow I have scheduled, if the Lord wills, William Albrecht and myself, <clears throat> we will be discussing Genesis 3.15, the woman and her seed that crushes the head of the serpent. So because that's scheduled tomorrow, I decided I'll just do one tonight because Lord willing, tomorrow, because for me, Thursday's tomorrow. For many of you, it's already Thursday. Because right now it's <clears throat> 2 a.m. in New York, in Michigan, Eastern Standard Time. So those of you who are in New York and Michigan, it's already Thursday. Those of you on the other side of the world, it's already Thursday. So go to my YouTube channel, <clears throat> hit the notification button, notify. I have a schedule. William and I will be doing a discussion. Lord Jesus willing, around 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. Michigan Time, 5 p.m. New York Time, on Genesis 3.15, The Woman and the Seed. <clears throat> and I'll explain why in a minute, but let me just take care of the uh, air condition. I know sometimes you hear the air condition back. I don't want it to get distracted. But as I do that, what I need you guys to do is hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe if you believe the Lord is using this ministry. Like button, subscribe, and share this link on your social media pages. Invite believers and non-believers. Let them join. Because I'm going to now <clears throat> put the link to my stream yard so people can come and challenge me. Especially Mohammedans who want to defend their prophet. Let me do it right now. So hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. <clears throat> Share it on your social media platforms. Invite folks. Secondly, do me a favor. Once the session begins, once the session begins by the grace of Lord Jesus Christ, we're going to treat it as a class. You know how I run this. I run this as a class. What do I mean? We want this to be a class where the Holy Spirit is the teacher, not me. We are all disciples of the Holy Spirit. And I pray I'm a disciple of the Holy Spirit. I'm not self-deceived. And you're going to pray, which is the most important aspect. You're going to pray now in your hearts. Ask the Holy Spirit to show up. <clears throat> Use my mouth for his mouthpiece. And anoint me to speak truth without error so that he's the teacher. I'm not the teacher. I'm just the vessel in his hands. And he'll save me from error and speak in accord with his will. Because if the Holy Spirit shows up, we'll all be blessed. So this is a class where I want the Holy Spirit to teach, not me. So once it begins, please, out of reverence for the Lord, give your undivided attention. Do not engage in side talks. Do not engage in side issues or tangents. If you want to challenge me, there it is. I just pinned the stream yard. Come and challenge me. See if you can without ignoring objections <clears throat> or talking over me. So here's a praise report because we're going to pray. As you can tell, I'm not getting younger. <clears throat> Lord willing, September 14 will be 50. And my voice gives up much faster. When I was in my 20s and 30s, I could speak hours. And my throat, I should say, not my voice, my throat <clears throat> could handle it. Right now, my throat is weakening. So pray the Holy Spirit will strengthen my throat with perfect vigor, perfect health, perfect strength. And bless the sound of my voice to be pleasing to your ears. So you already have a troll, Bainish ba ba Baby. 
who is showing me his window where I can see the sunlight. But here's a praise report. Jo Jonas, Bartholomew too. So pray for me. Holy Spirit will strengthen my throat with perfect health and vigor and empower my voice to be pleasing to your ears. <clears throat> Those of you, who, of you who love Jesus Christ. Jonas Bartholomew II. Hey, Brother Sam, I was a convert to Islam in 2019. And a few months ago, I left Islam for Christ and was received as a catechumen and, Co and Coptic Orthodox Church last month after speaking to Abuna. So glory to the Father, glory to the Son, glory to the Holy Spirit. He's back worshiping, loving, adoring the triune God. And he's joined an apostolic church, a church, a church that has apostolic roots. But we live in a sad time where you're going to have some who are going to condemn him for embracing a form of Christology that's not orthodox because of the issue of <clears throat> Mia or monophysitism as opposed to deophysitism. But anyway, if you ask, don't take my word for it. Jonas, if you ask Abuna, is Jesus still a man in heaven with a glorified physical body? And will he return to the earth as a man in his glorified physical body? They'll say yes. It's the definition, interpretation of terms that has led to divisions. But anyway, glory to Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You're back worshiping the only true God who lives, the triune God. And now believing in the only books he inspired, the books of the Holy Bible, historically accurate, God's voice to us, and following an ancient church. May you grow, may we all grow, and fall in love with Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I have no idea what this, this is dummy is talking about. Yeah, I have no idea what this stupid dumb bastard is talking about. I think he's a Muhammad ambassador like Muhammad. So that said, guys, and I want to thank... Hussein, Steve, for cutting it short. Sorry, I didn't mean to put pressure. If you wanted to go longer, I would have just extended time. My, my bad. <clears throat> but let me explain again. This late night is for two reasons. Number one, an Indian brother, brother from India, asked me to do one that would be early for him, which would mean it would be later for me. And number two, I've already scheduled a talk tomorrow with William and I. But let's pray so we can talk about it. Guys, hit the like button. <clears throat> subscribe if you haven't subscribed, share the link, invite folks, and be prayed up. <clears throat> See, like I said, I'm getting old, guys. My voice is not what it used to be. But let's trust the Holy Spirit to strengthen my voice and strengthen my throat with health and vigor and save me from being attacked and distracted by Satan. So let's pray. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Yehovah Rapha, Yehovah Rapha, Yehovah Rapha, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. <clears throat> and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, both now and forever, unto ages of ages. <clears throat> in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and the almighty, matchless name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. <clears throat> Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence, he shall come to judge the living and dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, <clears throat> the resurrection of body, and life everlasting. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So, guys, let me explain. <clears throat> Tomorrow's session or Thursday session, because so for some of you, it's Thursday. You see, Satan's going to do what he's going to do to distract me. Now, I got hiccups. Throat is not the, the way it is, but by your prayers, pleading the precious blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse us, wash us, purify us, and shield us against Satan, we will endure. And may the Holy Spirit give us perfect 
vigor and health and strength. Anyway, go to my YouTube channel. Hit the notification if you're interested in the topic. William Albrecht will be joining me. Lord Jesus willing, Thursday at 5 p.m. 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is New York time, Michigan time. You'll see what the title is, Demolishing Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Genesis 3.15 and the woman in the sea. Now, why are we doing this? Well, again, I don't know for certain, but if you remember <clears throat> several weeks back, I did a two-part discussion, if my memory doesn't fail me, on Genesis 3.15 and, sorry about that, see, anyway, and the translation of, let me double check. I don't want to speak pre presumptuously. Hold on. Let me double check real quickly. One second, guys. For your prayers, we'll get through this. Let me check. Genesis 3.15, the Dewey Rames, Latin Vulgate. I already did a two-part session on, on this, if my memory doesn't fail me. In response to Robertson Jenis, who had made a mistake in a debate that he, that he had. So I had to correct that mistake, not because I'm smarter than him, not because I'm more knowledgeable than him, not because I'm on his level, but he's human like I'm human, and we all make mistakes. May God save us from error and mistakes and misinformation and save us from sin. And live for the glory of Jesus Christ. Rebuke Satan, Father. Rebuke Satan, Lord Jesus. Rebuke Satan, Holy Spirit. And strengthen my lungs, my chest, my artery, my heart, my throat. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. It is what it is. Yep. Yeah, in the Dewey Rames translation, which was translated in the last decade, or I should say, in the last part of the 16th century. Last part of the 16th century. It was translated... In English, and it was based on the Latin Vulgate, and it was translated in English before the King James was produced. The King James came out in 1611. This beat the King James. It came out in the late 1580s, if my memory serves me serves me well. So anyway, in the Latin Vulgate, Genesis 3:15, and this, by the way, is not based on all the extent Latin copies of Genesis 3. As I demonstrated and I documented by quoting even Catholic answers and a Catholic source, the Vulgate that was originally produced by Jerome, where he had access to Hebrew copies of the Old Testament that are no longer in existence, and he had access to Greek versions of the Old Testament and Greek copies of the New Testament that are no longer in existence, he rendered it as he, the seed, would crush that of the serpent. However, <clears throat> here's the link to the Dewey Rames Latin Vulgate. There are certain copies of the Latin Vulgate that read it as a feminine. She will crush your head. Sorry, guys. Don't let my hic hiccups disturb you. It's going to go away in Jesus' name. Here's the link. Click on it. So let me post it. So I demonstrated and documented that... What Jerome originally translated said, he shall crush your head, not she. But then I explained how the woman who typifies Israel, the nation, who, her, who herself, Israel, typifies Mary, right, is included in crushing the head of the serpent. So that it's not either or. The blessed mother whom the woman prefigures is involved and included in crushing that of the serpent. I demonstrated that in my two session. Look for it. It was just a couple weeks ago. Now, well, let me post what the Vulgate says. Hold on. Here it is. So you can see it for yourself. And here it is right here. hope you're not bored. I hope the Lord will show up and the Spirit will take over my tongue to bless you. Here it is. Read with me. I will put enmities between thee and the woman and thy seed and her seed. She shall crush thy head. She shall crush thy head, not he. And thou shalt lie and wait for her heel, not his heel. Now, if you look at the Hebrew, the Hebrew, it's he. And I'll show you that in a minute. Now, here's the Latin. Here's what the Latin says. Okay, here you go. 
here it is. Latin. Here's the Latin from which the Dewey Vulgate rendered Genesis 3.15. Here it is. Now, you'll see the word ipsa. Ipsa canteret caput tuum. Ipsa is she. If my memory doesn't fail me, and guys, check Sheikh Google, the greatest scholar who ever lived. The masculine in Latin would be ipsum. Ipsum. But here, the Latin has ipsa. Now, let me again repeat. Go back and rewatch those sessions. Just like in the Greek copies and the Hebrew copies, all the copies of all the biblical books, all the copies of any book produced before the printing press, including the Quran, has variant readings. There are memory, there are many, ipse, philhori, double check. I don't know if ipsum is plural or saying, but check, brother, you could Google it. Don't let your memory fail you and me. Ipse or ipsum, if I recall, right? Anyway, the, the Latin that Jerome produced didn't have ipsa. It didn't say ipsa. It actually said he. But as they copied the Latin Vulgate, right, you have about 10,000 copies of the biblical books in Latin. So ipsum is neutral. Okay, good. You have a roughly close to 10,000 copies of the biblical books in Latin. Over 5,000, close to 10,000 copies of the biblical books in Latin. So there are variant readings. The particular Latin copies that the Dewey Rames rendered, translated from, had ipsa. But other Latin copies, especially that that was produced by Jerome, didn't have ipsa. It was ipse. I believe that's the masculine because soldiers telling me ipsum is neutral. But anyway, that's fine. May the Holy Spirit save us from Aaron, perfect and correct <clears throat> our errors and guide us into all truth, recall and affirm the truth and obey the truth and save us from sin. Now, why am I mentioning this before we get into the topic? Because I suspect, I don't know this for a fact, only God knows for a fact, only God knows what happens behind closed doors, only God knows the hearts and the thoughts, <clears throat> but I suspect that Tony Costa and Anthony Rogers did a session about oh, two weeks after I did mine on this very topic of Genesis 3.15 in order to show that the Latin Vulgate is wrong and that it's not she, but he, Jesus, in order to pretty much take a cheap shot again against the Roman Catholics. And I suspect, now don't quote me on this, Number one, I didn't watch it because I don't watch Anthony's stuff. So I can guard my heart so I don't have hate towards him because I already want to take him out, but I want to do it in a way that the Holy Spirit will be glorified and Christ won't be shamed. So I avoid watching him so I don't build this hatred towards him and view him as no better than a Mohammedan, right? <clears throat> but so I didn't watch it, but it was brought to my attention because a sister in the Lord, who loves the Lord, who's on fire for the Lord, who I used to be close to, how all of a sudden has become a diehard Calvinist. And because she's become a diehard Calvinist, she has taken the stance of the Matt Slicks and the Anthony Rogers and really dislikes and despises the apostolic churches, particularly the Catholic church. So on her Facebook page, she had put a link to their discussion and saying, must watch, so you can know who the seed is. And then she takes a cheap shot <clears throat> at Catholics, and definitely it's not Mary. So I went after her in the comment section, and I rebuked her, and I chastened her, and I sent her links exposing Anthony Rogers for the intellectual fraud that he is, and brought her attention to what I did, and told her we're going to be responding. Well, I got blocked. She blocked, blocked me. Now, she loves the Lord. She's a good sister, but she's in that stage that I was where because you respect certain teachers you end up following and parroting everything they believe because you think they're sound in everything so she's now in this stage where she thinks Calvinism is the gospel and reformed theology is truth from God and since the reformers attacked the Catholic Church because the Catholic Church is the enemy she's now adopted an anti-Catholic position but trust me because I believe she loves the Lord and she belongs to the Lord 
and she means well, eventually she'll come out and see how wicked and vile and filthy five points of Calvinism happens to be. Like I did, like many are seeing and coming out by the power of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So because of that, I sent the link to William Albrecht. And I said, I can't watch Anthony because if he does something, he's going to make me act in the flesh and I'm going to go for the juggler and really humiliate him because he's already on my hit list like James White. So for my own testimony, for my own peace with the Lord, so I don't get the Holy Spirit angry by having hatred towards blasphemers and slanderers and liars and Bible perverts, I said, William, you watch it and you tell me if you think it's worth responding. So he watched it. He goes, let's respond to it. So Lord willing, Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, New York time, Michigan time, we're going to respond to Tony Costas and Anthony Rogers' sham attempt of <clears throat> deceiving people away from the fuller, more complete, more accurate understanding of who the seed actually is and the woman's relationship to the seed and crushing that as the serpent, which I already took care of. But you know what? I really suspect they did that because of me, because they want to try to protect people from being influenced from, from my exegesis. But it's going to backfire, and it's going to get Anthony even more upset, because if you go look at it, go. I already scheduled it, Sarah. Guys, go to my channel, schedule. Hit the notifi notif notification button. I said, demolishing Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, because I'm calling him out. So, Lord willing, that's why I'm doing a late session, because I don't think I'll have time to do an earlier session. So I'm doing this late session on Islam and opening up the Q&A for Muslims or anti-Trinitarians to show up because tomorrow or later Thursday, because it's Thursday for most of you, we have something already lined up on the woman and the seed and the woman's relationship to the seed and crushing that of the serpent. So pray for that and Holy Spirit, take over this session. Have your way with me. Have your way with us. Bring them in droves if you are pleased to bring them and to use me to glorify Jesus Christ. So Holy Spirit, I ask that you give us perfect self-control, self-discipline, self-restraint, especially in the areas that I struggle with. Break my bondage to food addiction and gluttony, to sinful, lustful passions. Holy Spirit, destroy our pride, our arrogance, our ego. Destroy jealousy and envy and, and gossip and maliciousness and slander. Destroy covetousness, idolatry and blasphemy. Control our tongues, Holy Spirit, our mouths, Holy Spirit, and control every word that comes out of our tongues and mouths, that no wicked, idolatrous, blasphemous word will ever be uttered from our mouths, disowning, betraying, denying, blaspheming, or shaming the Lord Jesus Christ. And do not allow us to fall into any scandal and shame ourselves and destroy the testimony that you've enabled us to have for the glory of Jesus Christ. But save us from Satan. Save us from our own flesh. Save us from our own slothfulness, laziness. Save us from the fruits of our flesh. Destroy our flesh and the fruits of our flesh. Destroy our lusts. <clears throat> destroy distractions. Destroy attacks of the enemy. Empower us to submit to Lord Jesus with perfect submission and love Jesus by obedience, not for praise or status or fame or fortune, but to prove to ourselves that we belong to the Lord Jesus and the way we'll know that is by keeping his word. And we depend on you and your power to enable us to do so. So Holy Spirit, and strengthen us. Grant me the health I need to stay fit and healthy. And grant me the health I need to be able to speak with power and authority. Strengthen my throat, <clears throat> my heart, my arteries, my lungs and chest with the health and vigor that I need. For you are the breath of life, the Lord and giver of life. And feed all of us. Every one of us, our loved ones, my daughters, my angels, the holy flesh of Jesus Christ. And give them, give our loved ones, give, give us the blood of Jesus Christ for our food, for our nourishment, for our healing, for our salvation, redemption, for protection, deliverance from our own flesh, from the world and its lust, and from satanic temptation. Bless the internet connection, the audio and visual qualities. And enable me to recall everything perfectly. These gifts you've given me, empower me to perfect them and use them to glorify Jesus and build the church and not to bring attention to myself. Do not allow us to prostitute ourselves for money or position or fall into any scandal as many are falling because we're not better than them. 
We need you, please. Destroy our fake piety and fake humility and give us true piety and humility and true spirituality and holiness and righteousness and purity and love and devotion. Illuminate our hearts and minds to hear your voice. Drown out all other voices in our lives and the lives of our loved ones, my daughters, and only your voice to be enslaved to your voice, empowered, transformed by your voice, in love with your voice, and obeying and proclaiming your voice. And one thing for certain, your voice speaks perfectly in the scriptures you produce through holy men and are preserved. Help us to know that book and live it out and love it and proclaim it even unto death and never betray the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Take over. Guide the discussion. Help me expose Muhammad, this antichrist who's burning in hell under the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ, and shake Muslims from their very core to see why Muhammad is evil and all of the Quran is not God, and bring them to the feet of your eternal companion, the Father's love, Jesus Christ, who became flesh. And if I've forgotten to pray for anything else, Holy Spirit, remind me and perfect our ability to see physically and spiritually. Bless this session. We need you and bring them. Bring those who couldn't come earlier that are able to come now and bless this ministry for your glory, Holy Spirit, for the glory of Jesus, for the glory of the Father. And again, Lord, give me perfect self-control to keep on this path of victory, keeping healthy and holy and pure and spiritual. You are Lord, Holy Spirit, we confess you. You are the Lord. You are God, the Lord and giver of life. You are our Lord, our God, our creator, our maker our fashioner, our designer, our potter, our savior, deliverer, <clears throat> redeemer, our teacher, instructor, <clears throat> our disciplinarian, <clears throat> the helper from the father, the counselor from the father, poured out by the son, your eternal companion upon us. You are everything, our all in all, our rock, our strong fortress, our city of refuge, the rock of our salvation our love and our life in union with the father and the son you are all that the father and the son are in regards to deity truly fully god as much god as the father and the son are because you are one with the father and son and your essence is the father's essence and the son's essence not three gods but one god who is the father in union with the son and the eternal spirit and we confess that and believe that without any doubt in the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, folks. All right. Uh, look at this guy. I don't know who this guy is, and so why is he calling me? Hold on. Sorry. Let me see. One second, guys. Why are you calling me on Hello. Skype when I'm on a live stream? Oh, I'm from India, sir. Okay, but why call me Hello. on Skype? I'm on live stream. Why aren't you coming on my YouTube channel to my live stream? And I have a link to my stream yard. Don't call me on Skype. Go to my YouTube channel. I'm live right now. Okay. All right. Okay, guys. Sorry about that. All right. Uh, I don't know what you mean why there is no Daniel 13, 14 in the King James Version because that's part of the Deuterocanonical, what the Protestants call the Apocrypha, and it would not be part of Daniel. It would be relegated with those books that the King James Version translators rendered and included, but not as part of Daniel. Come on, Helson. Helson, you know there's Google, right? Google King James Version Apocrypha, what we call Deuterocanonical. In fact, here, let me show it to you. One second. I have it. So, guys, get ready. Let me put on the air conditioning. It's hot on me. Guys, invite people. Wake up. Not the one who should be sleeping. Not you. I have a I have a hard copy, a hard copy of the King James Version Apocrypha. I don't want to be too loud, but I want my neighbors. But you can read it online because when the King James translators translated the Bible 1611, they also translated 
the Deuterocanonicals, called the Apocrypha by the Protestants. So it was included, but not as part of Daniel. They went with the Masoretic version of Daniel, which is shorter. So one second. Now, I just keep this up in today. Let me show you the hard copy. And Lord willing, I'll show you where you can find it online. Okay? I'll show you where you can find it online. See? When you want something, you can't find it. When you don't want it, you find it. See how you are? Hold on, folks. I'll let's start going to be seen. I can't. All right, I'll just have to give you the link for the online version. Hold on, folks. I'm gonna have to give you the link for the online version. Don't hang, participate. This ha this is what happens when Helson asks me a question not related to the topic. Thank you, Helson. Appreciate you, sir. Thank you for your existence. Thank you. We appreciate that you exist. So you can make me take longer than normal, so I don't sleep. We already have our time sleeping, Nelson. Nelson, not Nelson. Even though it's an R, that means he's from Brazil. And the R in the Portuguese language, because that's what I think you Brazilians speak, is Portuguese, right? It's pronounced like an H. So it's not Relson, it's Helson. Am I right? Come on now. I'm not as dumb as my friend Sargon D looks. I'm not as dumb as my friend Sargon D looks. Okay? Brazilians, you guys speak Portuguese, don't you? And you have R's at the beginning of your name, but it's not pronounced R, it's pronounced H. So like, Royce Gracie, but he spells it with an R, Royce. So the R is pronounced as an H, Royce Gracie, you know? Who else, what is his name? Uh, yeah, anyway, you get it. Okay, so let me get you... The online King James version rendering of the Apocrypha. They call it Apocrypha. Okay, so here it goes, and we're going to begin. We're going to have fun, guys. It's For me, I'm all by myself. I'm just waiting for the cat to show up, but I had to close the door. I didn't want the neighbors to get upset. But Helson, here you go, Helson. Hopefully this makes your day. Okay, makes your day. All right. The Apocrypha King James Version. Here it is, folks, online for free. All you do is pay for the internet. The Lord Jesus has blessed us with all these resources, so we have no excuse not to believe in Jesus Christ, right? So this is why Hussein, you there? Oh, yeah, that's right. Hussein, you have Brazilian blood, don't you? All right, there it goes, guys. Do you see it? There is the link. Click on it. So, Helson, you're going to see, if you go there, you're going to see that. So, we have a dog whose mother is known in Iran for doing muta, who calls himself human, but he's not man enough to come on StreamYard to debate me. Just like Muhammad was not man enough to fight, he had to send people, jihadis, to murder for him. But anyway, click on it, Helson. Here it is. Here's the link again. Guys, click on it. You'll see that the additional chapters to Daniel, like Susanna, right, and Bell and the Dragon and all that, it's there. They translated it. But what they have for the Old Testament are the 39 Old Testament books accepted by the Jews, and they have them in the form that the Jews except the Masoretic version of Jeremiah, of Daniel, right? Whereas in the Greek versions, 
even though it was initially translated by Jews based on earlier Hebrew copies, they were translating from longer recensions, longer forms of Daniel and Jeremiah. So the, all of it has been preserved, but it's been preserved in the various languages that the books were translated early on and spread like wildfire all over the world, making wholesale corruption of all the books humanly impossible. So there you go. I hope that helped you, Helson. Are you, are you happy now, sir? So now that said, let's begin. What I wanted to do, I wanted to talk about Muhammad being inconsistent, but let's talk about Jalal Abu Rub's attempt to use John 17 and 1 Timothy 2 to disprove the Trinity and to prove that Jesus in John 17 was a Muslim who pretty much taught <clears throat> Tawheed, Islamic Unitarianism, and pretty much exhorted his followers to a form of the Shahada. Now, if you guys don't know what the Shahada is, Shahadatain. Shahada means testimony, testification, witnessing, to witness, to testify. Shahada. It's also the word used for martyr, which is similar to the Greek word, marturos. In Greek, there's a word marturos that means martyr, even sounds like martyr, but it also means someone who bears witness testifies. And so a martyr is someone who bears witness with his life, that he gives up his life in bearing witness to what he believes. So there mm -hmm. is an element in Arabic shahada, like when a martyr, when a Muslim dies, he's called a shaheed. Shaheed, okay? He's called a shaheed. Shahada, bear witness, shaheed. A uh, Mohammedan woman raping, woman prostituting jihadi who bore witness that he believes Allah, who is Satan, and Muhammad, who's the son of Satan, is a messenger by dying, by being murdered, or murdering for his fake God and fake prophet. Similarly, in Greek, in Greek, if you guys are listening, if you guys are listening, you have the word marturos. Now, marturos can mean a martyr. Sounds like it. And it means someone who bears witness, testifies, a witness. And the reason why martyrs are called witnesses, marturos, a witness, is because they bear witness to their faith that they have absolute belief in their faith, absolute, complete affirmation that what they're saying is true and they believe it's true by willing to die for it. You guys got it now? Focus in Jesus' name. Don't let the demons distract you. And may the Holy Spirit grant us clarity of thought and guide us and cover us with a wall of fire from his presence and purify us in the blood of Jesus Christ and do that for our loved ones and my daughters. Okay, are you guys ready? So everyone got that? All right. Now, let me see. What do I, okay. So, Jalal Abu Narub is one of the most vile, wicked, nasty, Muhammad and Ziyomi. He is nasty, vile, demonic. He hates evangelical Christians. He hates Trinitarian Christians. He hates the Bible, and he doesn't even mask it. And he's a nasty, vile human being. I exposed him a while back in a series of emails that I was privy to when the Muslims were trying to get me to attack Jalal and Nadir Ahmed showing how nasty and vile and foul-mouthed he is. So let me expose this dog for who he is. Well, hold on one second, see? Distraction after distraction. In Jesus' name, bless this session. Anoint us. Fill us with the joy of your presence. Okay. I'm not slandering this dog. I'm telling you the truth. I have the documentation, and he knows it. That's why he can't stand me. I have the emails from him. They're online. And I also have emails that was sent to me by his daughter. Let me tell you what a vile person he is. He boasts and brags about going to Afghanistan and fighting in the jihad against the Russians. You know what that means? This man beheaded people, and this man would have raped women taken captives because he's filth like his prophet and his fake god, all of the Quran who say, okay? That's who this man is. And he boasts about doing jihad. Now, 
because God Almighty will not be mocked, I'm going to show you how the Lord has shamed and humiliated this man. Not only do I have the emails exposing the filth he is, and it's online, I'll get you the link. Years ago, his daughter, Moon Abul Rub, contacted me, and I have the emails, and I even showed him the emails to muzzle him, telling me about the atrocities of her father, the dishonesty of her father, and accusing her father of actually sweeping another man's wife off her feet and marrying her. And I have the emails. His daughter ended up becoming a lesbian. Her name is Moon Abul Rub. And I have the emails. And he knows it because I just recently went on his page and I shared the emails. I go, you keep barking and blaspheming Jesus. I will muzzle you and your prophet and expose you. So his daughter became a lesbian. She left Islam. Her name is Moon Abul Rub. She had a social media page and spoke out against her father and his atrocities. And she sent me their email correspondence. And I have it saved. Right? So I'm not slandering. Now, not too long ago, he mentioned funeral services for one of his daughters. I don't know how many daughters he has. I don't know if he was referring to Moon. But I know he has a daughter that passed away less than a year ago, and he buried her. And I'm wondering and suspecting if it was Moon Abul Rub, his daughter who left Islam and became a lesbian. Yep. Ab Jalal Abul Rub, Pedro, debated David Wood and James White. James White, he debated David Wood on Muhammad being a prophet, and James White on is Jesus God. Jalal Abul Rub. A B U A L R U B. Now I'm giving you the link. To his article in John 17 and 1 Timothy 2 in description box. So let me show it to you because we're going to refute it. But it gets worse for this guy. See, what does the Bible say? Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, that you shall reap. Not only did his daughter, Moon Abu Rub, expose him and sent me their email correspondence, which I preserved. Not only did she turn out to be a lesbian, and I pray she finds the Lord Jesus Christ if she hasn't died already. Her only hope of salvation. But his son left Islam and became a model. And from the pictures, it may even be he's a gay model. Talk about being humiliated and ashamed. May God protect our children. May the Lord have mercy on our children. May the Lord preserve my daughters, that my daughters never fall into the world. May the Lord save all your children to be in love with Jesus Christ and not fall into the snares of Satan. But this man, a blasphemous swine who hates Jesus Christ, Hates the Bible, hates Trinitarians. Two of his children, one became a lesbian, left Islam, spoke out against her father, exposed him, and his son, models, has nothing to do with Islam. Let me show you the link to his son. And here's the link to the article. Let me post it because we're going to respond to it now. Okay? This is it. Here's the article, guys. Click on it because we're going to go through it. This man, by citing John 17 and 1 Timothy 2, ends up proving all of the Quran is Satan. Muhammad is the Antichrist, son of the devil, because these verses prove that the God revealed in Jesus Christ is not all of the Quran. Okay, but now let me show you. So you don't think I'm slandering him. I'm not. I am not slandering him. Here it is. Okay. Abu al -Rub. Hold on, here it is. Model. Here it goes. Now, I can't show you on the screen, so you're going to have to click on it and see. Lord Jesus willing, maybe during the upcoming week when Protestant believer is free, pray for him. He's busy working long hours and studying for the test. Pray God will anoint him to pass the test with flying colors. Pray the Lord bless his daughter to conceive children for the glory of the Lord. Pray for Prophet Google, their financial status. Pray for Prophet Google's dad who's going through cancer. The Lord Jesus will have mercy on him. But guys, click on it. His name is A.J. Abu Look at his son. Here's the link. It's too long. Just click on the first one if you can. Click on it. See if it opens up. Does it open up? It doesn't, right? Sorry. Okay, it doesn't do it. All right. Anyway, do A.J. Abu model. Let's see if we can go to the images. Yeah, it's too long. Yeah. Do AJ Abul Rub model. 
and see what you find. Here is a link to his page. Here it is. This is what he looks like. So do the letters AJ, Abu, A-B-U, A-L-R-U-B, Abu Rub. So it opened for you? That's his son. Does he look like a Muslim? Does he look like a Muslim? Thank you. Here's the link. Does he look like a Muslim? That's Jalal Abu Rub's son. So a daughter left, became lesbian, exposed her father, sending me their private correspondence. And this son, you'll see he's half naked. Click on the images. Many of the images, half naked. And underwear, abs, right? Who knows? He may be homosexual. So there you go, guys. And here's the link to the page where you can see it's models.com. So this is the man, the vile, heathen, spiritual dog who mocks the Lord Jesus, attacks the Bible, tries to bully Christians, but we are bully destroyers. And now we're going to punish his prophet for his blasphemy. See, notice what his given name is. Ahmad Jalal. What a disgrace and humiliation to Allah and Muhammad. A man named Ahmed. Now notice his middle name is Jalal. That's his father's name. AJ. Ahmad Jalal. Born June 20, 1987. So this is his son. Notice how he disgraced his father, Allah and Muhammad. He has the name Muhammad, Ahmed. And his father's middle his father's name is his middle name, Jalal Abul Rub. There you go. This is what happens when you mock God, he will make you a fool and embarrass you. So you guys see it? Okay. So this is the man we're dealing with. So with that said, let's now respond to the post. Here's the post. So let's get ready. It, it won't take me too long to respond to this trash, his distortion of scripture, right? So let's do it. Let me get it. Here it is. Here's the link one more time. It's in the description box. Let me go through his arguments and let's refute them. Shall we? All right, here it goes. Hope this is going to be beneficial. It's going to bless you. It's not going to bore you. Here it goes. The name of the title. Look at the title. Monotheism versus polytheism. You see what a wicked, filthy, spiritual dog he is? Why I have no respect for these people? Why I cannot be kind to these people? He's calling Trinity polytheism when he is the stone licker, right? Anyway, we'll get into it. Who believes in an anthropomorphized God, an embodied God, right? But anyway, so the title is Monotheism versus Polytheism, Tawheed versus Tathleeth, Tathleeth, meaning three. You see what a nasty, vile dog he is? He cannot even try to mask his hatred with even giving the facade that he cares about Christians who try to win them. He cannot hide how nasty he is because he's filthy like his prophet. Thank the Lord Jesus he's raised us up to then crush these blasphemers and expose their prophets. So he quotes, an evangelical extremist wrote, isn't this the pot calling the kettle black? We are the extremists. An evangelical extremist wrote, a man who went to Afghanistan, who beheaded people, slit their throats, who would have then taken women captive and raped them, even if they were married, and then sell them as property. And he says, we're extremists. This dog. No disrespect to dogs. No disrespect to filth. Filth is cleaner than this dog. Dogs are cleaner than him. So, Lord Jesus, forgive me for insulting filth and dogs, but what can I say? Okay. What can I say? Am I, is it uh, buffering? Uh-oh, I'm going to have to probably connect to the modem. Is my audio okay? If it gets bad, I'm going to have to connect to the modem, folks. Audio okay? Because we're about to begin to respond. We got a response. Let me know. Audio okay, guys? Okay, good. Pray the connection stays strong, or I'm going to have to go and connect to the modem. All right, now let's read. He begins, an evangelical extremist wrote, according to the Holy Bible, there's only one true God, Deuteronomy 6.4, Galatians 3.20. Agreed. John 17, 3 quoted Jesus' statement. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Also, 1 Timothy 2, 5 declares, 
For there's one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Okay, you got it? So he's now quoting John 17 to show there is no Trinity. There's only one true God and Jesus is in him. And he quotes Paul showing there's no Trinity. There's only one God and Jesus is in him. Here it is. Isn't that amazing? So now let's have fun, shall we? Let's break down his arguments. Well, I read a few more paragraphs and let's have some fun. It would be rather silly to read these two verses this way had Jesus been God at any time. That is, and this is life eternal, that they might know me, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, my son, whom I have sent. You see that? See the mockery? Or for the Bible declare, for there's one God and one God between God and men, the God Jesus, Christ Jesus. You see the mockery? You see why effeminate Christianity is not going to work, folks? Being sissified, being feminized if you're a man, being effeminate if you're a man, is not going to work with these bullies, these blasphemers, these spiritual dogs. You need to be like the true prophets, like the holy apostles, like the church fathers, like Elijah, filled with the Holy Spirit and bold to humiliate them, mock them, and insult them in their gods, like Elijah did in the showdown with the prophets of Baal. Okay? Notice again the insult and the blasphemy. Okay, watch here. Watch here. It would be rather silly to read these two verses this way. Had Jesus been God at any time, that is, and this is life eternal, that they may know me, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, myself, who, whom I hath sent. Or for the Bible to declare, for there is one God, and one God between God and men, the God Christ Jesus. You see that? All right. Now let's put holes through his argumentation. Because he's going to use these verses to prove the Shahada. There is no God but Allah, and Jesus is his messenger. So let me read this other blasphemous slur. Note, look at this. Look what he says right after this. Note, John Doe, don't help me, brother. Let me take care of it. Just listen. Don't help me. The Holy Ghost, who Christians also declare is God, is suspiciously absent in the above biblical verses. Did you catch it? Can this man mask how vile and filthy and Satan-filled he is? Because just the mention of the true God gets his demons riled up. See? You see the shot, the blasphemy? The Holy Ghost, who Christians also declare is God, is suspiciously absent in the above biblical verses. So, let's finish it. God, Allah, has always been described as one, only one, the only true God. Christians do not agree. They call their creed Trinity, not oneity. You see that? Because they believe in three different gods, not one God, but three distinct gods who have three different jobs, three different personalities, three different actions, three different roles, three different essences. You see that? You can't even represent what we believe. Three different essences, three different experiences, three different faiths. How can anyone state that God is only one true God and then go on to defend his faith, that one actually means three? One and three and three and one. This is polytheism, sure, in its truest essence. See that? Jesus, for instance, died, as Christians claim. But God did not die. The Holy Ghost did not die either. John 17, 3 agrees that Jesus is not God. Because when referring to God, Jesus said, thee, not me. And when referring to his own status, he said, whom thou hast sent, not whom I have sent. Right? And this is life eternal, that they may might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Agreed. La ilaha illallah. There is no ilah, God except Allah. Isa Rasulallah, Jesus, messenger of Allah. Here Jesus clearly declares that he's human, not divine. So now let's bury this guy, his filth, his blasphemy, his book, his deen, his prophet, and his fake God. By the power of the true God, Father, Son, and Spirit. See? This is what he says. I want you to read it. Let's begin. Does John 17, 3 teach Jesus is only human, not divine? And does it confirm the Islamic shahada, shahad, shahadatain, the two testimonies? I bear witness there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Jesus is the messenger of Allah. Does it do that? Let's see, okay? Let's go to John 17. And by the way, if you go to the description box, I gave you over a half dozen articles just on John 17. Rebuttals articles, some are two parts, some are three parts. Rebuttals and in-depth exposition of John 17, 3. It's in the description box, and I'll pin it as a comment later. Take all my materials, take all my videos, study them accurately, understand them correctly. 
absorb the facts perfectly, share them accurately, and you can upload them and translate them. Do it. Okay? So now let's use John 17 to destroy Islam. Does John 17 show that Jesus is merely human, not divine? And does it show that Jesus in John is confirming the Islamic conception of there being only one God and that Jesus is his messenger? And yes, God is one, but is the only one person? He confuses Unitarianism with monotheism. Let me repeat. He confuses Unitarianism with monotheism. Unitarianism is not monotheism. It's a form of monotheism, but it's not monotheism in the sense that anything that's not Unitarian in belief is not monotheism. So let me break that down. Monotheism means one God. Unitarianism is the belief that this one God is only one person. So that is a form of monotheism, but it's not monotheism. Because Trinitarianism is the belief that that one God, not three gods, eternally exists as three persons. So you have Unitarian monotheism versus Trinitarian monotheism. But what the Muslims like to do to mock Christians, call Tawheed monotheism and Trinity polytheism. So everyone got that? Don't fall for that trap. Unitarianism is not identical to monotheism unitarianism is a form of monotheism but there are other forms of monotheism because monotheism comes from two words let me help you because we're in seminary let the holy spirit teach holy spirit take over and use my mouth and guide me to speak perfectly clearly and accurately to build up your church and glorify the lord jesus okay okay now monotheism two words monos monos theos monos theos one and only God. Trinitarianism teaches there's one and only one God. So that's a form of monotheism. But it teaches that that one God is not unipersonal. He's not a singular person. That's Unitarianism. So you can be a monotheist and not a Unitarian. You can be a Trinitarian monotheist. Because monotheists are not limited to Unitarians. So don't fall for that trap. Did we get that right? Things I've already discussed in previous sessions for years and in articles. But we're creatures of petition. We need to hear something repetitively until it becomes second nature by the power of the Holy Spirit. So did you get that? You understand? Monotheists are not all Unitarians. And you don't have to be a Unitarian to be a monotheist. Unitarianism is a form of monotheism, but it's not the only form. Trinitarian monotheism, that's another expression of monotheism. So the real question is, is that one only God a singular person or is he tri-personal? Is he only one person or is he Father and the Son and the Spirit so that the one true God who's the Father is the one God in perfect, eternal, inseparable unity with the Son and the Spirit? Because the Father's essence is the Son's essence and the Spirit's essence, the three being inseparable and eternal, always existing with one another. That's the real issue. So we got that part? Okay, so does John 17 prove his case or does John 17 expose Muhammad as a fraud, proves Muhammad is an antichrist, and Allah the Quran is a fake God? Well, let's now go to the Bible. Okay, here we go. Let's go to the Bible. I'm going to use the New King James Version. John 17, verses 1 to 5. And he brought up 1 Timothy 2, 5, right? Okay. Let's, let's do that too. 2, 5 to 6. And then 6, 14 to 16. And then we're going to go to Muhammad Bean. And because, by the way, the Q&A will be open to everyone, even Christians who have questions. But let me finish the subject. John 17. Let's just look at verses 1 or 2 to see if this agrees with Islam. You guys already know this, but it's okay. Let's refuse Jalab. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you. Question. Does Jalal Abul Rub, does his book, does his prophet, 
Just as God agreed. The only true God is the Father who glorifies Jesus, his son, the way Jesus, his son, glorifies him. Does Jalal Abu Arub amen this? Can he come and say, amen, I agree. The true God is the father of Jesus. The true God is the father who glorifies Jesus as his son in the same way that Jesus, his son, glorifies him. Does he accept that? What do you guys think? Of course he doesn't. Because what does the Quran say in chapter 9, verse 30? Surah the Tawbah. The Jews say, Uzair, Ezra, is the son of Allah. And the Nasara, the Nazarenes, the Christians say, the Messiah is the son of Allah. This is a saying from their mouths. And in this, they imitate the disbelievers of old. <clears throat> Allah fight them. Allah kill them. Because Allah fights them, meaning kill them. How perverse they are. How perverted are they. So that's number one. If I just read verse 1, Jesus in John 17 proves Muhammad, Antichrist, son of the devil, and of the Quran is a fake God. So the God that Jesus proclaimed is not Allah of the Quran. You interfaith Catholics, Orthodox, Protestants. You who seek interfaith dialogue, looking for commonality, ignoring the differences that prove this is a different God, a different religion. Just like rabbinic Judaism is a different God, different religion. But you who are involved in interfaith, trying to find com commonality, you are butchering scripture, denying scripture, suppressing scripture, watering down scripture in order to sit at the same table and give Muslims and Orthodox Jews an equal platform as if their religions are respectable and equal to the Christian faith. Yep, exactly, Fuluraya. So right away, verse 1 destroys Islam. But I want you to understand how majestic the sun is. Can you cite for me in the Old Testament or even the Quran, Jalal's false book, a prophet saying, an angelic creature saying, Allah, glorify me so that I may glorify you. Glorify me the way I glorify you. Glorify me so that I too will glorify you. Which creature, angelic or human, if they're God-fearing, can demand that God Almighty glorify that creature so that that creature can then reciprocate, reciprocate and glorify God? So that the way God glorifies the creature is the way the creature glorifies God. The way the creature glorifies God is the way God glorifies the creature. Does that sound like Jesus is merely human? Okay, now let's see how the Father of the Son, the Lord Jesus, glorifies the Son. Now let's read verse 2. Okay, here it is. You ready? Let's unpack this. As you have given him authority over all flesh. See, Father, you have glorified me the way I glorify you. And I'm glorifying you because you're glorifying me. It's reciprocal. You do this for me, I'll do it for you. And the way I glorify is the way you glorify me. And here's how the Father glorified the Son. You have glorified me by giving me sovereign authority and lordship over all flesh. This in Islam is the category known as Tawheed al-Rububiyyah. Tawheed al-Rububiyyah. That Allah is the sole Lord. He's the only Lord. Of heaven and earth and the sole lord of all creatures jesus says the father has glorified me his son by appointing me to have sovereign authority over all flesh so that jesus is the lord of all flesh meaning he shares in the rububiya the lordship of the father now does jalal believe that jesus shares in the only true God's lordship, sovereignty, dominion over all flesh. So that Allah's lordship, Rububiya, is Jesus' lordship. Because Jesus partakes, participates in, shares in 
the sovereign lordship of Allah because he's trying to prove that this God is Allah. Everyone with me? Tawheed al rububiyah You want me there? You caught it? Secondly, Jesus says he as the son has authority over all flesh. Last time I checked, Muhammad was flesh. Jalal Abu Arub is flesh. The Muslims are flesh. Does Jalal Abu Arub believe that Jesus owns Muhammad because he owns all flesh? Owns Jalal, owns all Muslims, owns all Muslim lands, <clears throat> everything on earth, all flesh and all they own belongs to Jesus because he is the sovereign Lord having sovereign authority over all flesh. Focus, guys. Does he accept this? He can't because I'm going to show you what the Quran says in a minute. But now what about the next part? Watch this part. Not only has the father given his son lordship, authority over all flesh, so that Jesus is Muhammad's lord and master. Jesus is Jalal Abu Al-Rub's lord and master. Jesus is the lord and master of all Muslim, of all flesh, of all creatures on earth, because all of it is his. The father has also appointed the son to do what? That he, the son, should give eternal life, never-ending life, incorruptible life, physical immortality, moral incorruptible existence to as many as you have given me. Does Jalal believe Jesus the Son will grant all the believers that the Father gives to the Son immortality so that Jesus will make us, if we remain faithful, physically immortal where we never die, transforming our bodies that will never decay, never experience pain, no more sin, where he will then make us morally incorruptible so that we can live in perfect union with him forever. Does he believe the Son of God, Jesus, does this? Does he believe that? Why didn't he quote this? Why did he not quote this? Now comes verse 3. Now let's explain verse 3. Now let's explain verse 3. Okay. Be patient. You guys are anxious to refute him. Be patient, dude. We'll get there. I know you're anxious to quote Titus 2.13. Be patient, brethren. And this is eternal life. Now, remember what 2 said. You have appointed me the Son to give eternal life to all that you give him, as many as you give him. Well, how do those that the Father gives to the Son obtain eternal life from the Son? How do I obtain, how do I receive eternal life from the Son? Because Jesus said in verse 2, that I, the Son, will give eternal life to as many as the Father gives to me, to my care. Well, okay, now the Father gives me to the Son. How do I obtain this eternal life from the Son? Here's how. This is eternal life. You want eternal life? You want Jesus to give you eternal life? Then you must know the only true God, who is the Father of Jesus, who glorifies Jesus the Son the same way the Son glorifies Him, who appointed the Son to be sovereign Lord over all flesh, and appointed the Son to give immortal existence to as many as the Father brings to the Son to trust in the Son. So you must know that God, and you must know Jesus Christ whom you have sent. In other words, the way I receive eternal life is to know the Father and Jesus intimately. I must know the Father and the Son equally, intimately. I must have an intimate, personal, living relationship with the Father and Son, where I grow to love the Father and Son equally, where I grow to know the Father and Son more intimately and more completely. Note, Jesus did not say eternal life comes from knowing the Father intimately and loving the Father personally and completely. No, you got to love me and know me and grow to love me and grow to know me intimately and have an intimate relationship with me to the same extent that you do so with the Father. You got it? So Jesus just said, eternal life is dependent on you having an intimate, 
personal relationship, communion with Father and Son equally. You must grow to know the Father and Son equally. You must grow to love the Father and Son perfectly and intimately. You must grow in your devotion and adoration and intimacy with the Father and the Son equally because you can't have one without the other. And once you do, then Jesus, the Son, will give to all of you, as many as you are, never-ending, morally incorruptible, physically immortal existence. Does that sound like a creature? Before I move on, does that sound like a creature? Help me out, guys. It's your class. It's your time. Does that sound like a creature talking this way? What creature can say, I will give this quality of life to as many as the Father gives me? I will give to every individual believer who comes to know the Father and I, who comes to have an intimate, personal fellowship, loving relations with the Father and I, I will give to every one of them Moral incorruptibility, never-ending, physical, immortal existence. Because that requires that Jesus be all-powerful to do so. And not only all-powerful, he must be omniscient. Why? Because he must know who are the believers that are truly growing in their intimacy and fellowship and love with the Father and Him. He must know who they are from those who are lip service. And then he must be present with all of them to oversee them and preserve them immortally. And yet he thinks that John 17, 3 shows that Jesus is a human, that he's a Muslim who taught the Shahadatain. Can you believe that? Can you believe the audacity of these people? Now let's look at John 17, 5 and 24 to wrap this up and go to 1 Timothy. John 17, 5 and 24. To wrap this up, I know to 1 Timothy. Okay. I have glorified you. I'm reading John 17, 4 to 5. Uh, you on earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, Father, watch here. I've glorified you. You glorify me. Glorify me, so I glorify you. <laughs> the Father glorifies the Son in the same way the Son glorifies him. Now, show me a creature that talks like this. Because now notice verse 5. Watch here. Watch here. And now, Father, I have glorified you by finishing the work you sent me to do on earth. So now you glorify me together with yourself, alongside of you, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Can Jalal say, Alhamdulillah, Subhanallah, right? I'm Amen. Jesus was with the Father before the creation of the world alongside of him in the same glory and jesus now returned physically to be with the father in heaven where he dwells alongside of the father in the same glory does he believe that does he believe that what about verse 24 let me read that verse again and now oh father glorify me together with yourself does he believe that? That Jesus is now physically, bodily with the Father, dwelling side by side alongside of him in the same glory. With the glory which I had, this glory I used to have, but he set it aside when he came to the world to make himself nothing, to take the status of a slave, which I had with you before the world was. Does he believe that before the world was created, before the creation of human beings before the creation of this planet the father was already there alongside the son side by side with the son the son was personally existing personally there as a divine person alongside of the father in the same glory before creation of the world does he believe that does he believe that what about verse 24 father i desire watch here Watch this. Father, I desire. Watch here. Let me put it up on the screen. That the, they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, 
that they may behold my glory, which you have given me, for you love me before the foundation of the world. Does he believe that Jesus is the Son who is personally existing alongside the Father, side by side with the Father before the creation of the world, <clears throat> in the same glory of the Father, and was the object of the Father's love before the world was created? So before the creation of the world, the Father was there in love with the Son, loving the Son, in loving fellowship with the Son, who is there alongside of Him in the same glory? Does he believe that? No, right? So you see how John 17 buried the Quran? Because the only true God that Jesus prayed to is his Father, God the Father. But all of the Quran is not a father. He's not Jesus' father. He's nobody's father. According to chapter 19, verse 88 to 93 of the Quran, chapter 19, verses 88 to 93, Allah is only a master, a lord, a despot, and we are only his slaves. So all of the Quran is not even the father. So how can he be the only true God that Jesus revealed? Because the only true God that Jesus revealed is his father. And by faith in Jesus, our father. And he's also the father that glorifies the son in the same way the son glorifies him. Whom appointed the son to be sovereign Lord over all flesh. Meaning Jesus owns Muhammad and all Muslims and owns Jalal. Which is why Muhammad is under the feet of Jesus in hell for rejecting the true Jesus. And he is the son who's almighty enough to grant immortal existence, morally incorruptible, physically indestructible existence to all who come to love and have intimate relationship with the Father and the Son. And he is the Son that was there alongside the Father, side by side with him, as a distinct person in fellowship with the Father before creation, being loved by the Father before creation and dwelling in the same glory, a glory he now has received again because he's there with the Father in the flesh, in his physical body, as a glorified man, side by side with the Father on the throne. None of which agrees with the Quran. None of which agrees with the Quran. All of which the Quran contradicts. In fact, what does the Quran say? Does Allah have a son that shares in his dominion, his sovereignty, his lordship? Here it is. Let's look at the Quran. 17, 111, and 25, verse 2 of the Quran. 17, 111, and 25, verse 2 of the Quran. Here you go. Chapter 17, verse 111, Hilali Khan translation. And oh, you may be getting a boot from my channel because you really want attention because you keep posting verses thinking you're helping me, you're not. Because you're posting verses that are not relevant to my discussion, even though you think they are. John, why don't you leave? Because I'm going to block you. Okay, 17, 111 of the Quran, Halali Khan. Chapter 17, verse 111. And say, all the praises and thanks be to Allah, who has not begotten a son, nor an offspring, and who has no partner in his dominion, nor is he low to have a wali, helper, protector, or supporter. And magnify him with all magnificence. Allahu Akbar, Allah is the most great. Did you catch it? The God of the Quran has no son and has no partner in his dominion over the heavens and the earth. The only true God revealed by Jesus has a unique son who was there personally alongside of him before the creation of the world, whom he's been in love with from before the creation of the world, who existed alongside him in the same glory, who's now with him again, albeit with a glorified physical body because he became man and he's a glorified man and he's there with the father side by side in the same glory ruling with the father over creation so the words of jesus buries the quran buries muhammad buries all of the quran and also buries <clears throat> jalal because the quran contradicts this what about chapter 25 verse 2 chapter 25 verse 2 here you go. And then I think we have a customer, and then I'm going to go into Muhammad violating his own commandments. 25 verse 2. He to whom belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth, and who has begotten no son, children or offspring, 
and for whom there is no partner in the dominion. He has no partner in his kingship, in his sovereignty of the, over the heavens and the earth. He has created everything and has measured it exactly according to its due measurements. So did you learn for the umpteenth time, because this is now probably the 10th million time I've discussed John 17, go to the description box and I'll pin them later as a comment. I have over half a dozen articles on John 17, 3, refuting Arians, Joe's Witnesses, Anti-Trinitarians, and Mohammedans, showing you how that verse does not refute the Trinity. It actually affirms the Trinity if you read contextually. Do you see how John 17 just destroyed the Quran, destroyed Muhammad, destroyed the, the Quran of God Allah because he's not the true God revealed by Jesus' his son and embarrassed Jalal for being a Bible butcher like his father the devil? Is that clear? Because at this point, we're done. If that's clear, we're done with this point. And we may have a customer, Resna. I don't know if it's a Muhammadan, it's a troll, we'll see. And then we're going to go to the second part. Let me know. This is your class, guys. Hit the like button. Invite more folks. Night is young. Clear for everybody? You now understood. Seek the face of the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Understand what you see and hear and read so you can then share the facts correctly. But you have responsibility. Learn these. Make them second nature and pass them on. Do your part in advancing the kingdom and destroying the lies of Satan. All right. Now, let's see. We may have a customer. Now, the second part is going to be even juicier. He's going to see how wicked, how immoral, what a sexual deviant Muhammad was and what a hypocrite he was. Didn't practice what he preached. So let me just see who this guy is. Yeah? Yes? Rasna? Unmute yourself, Rasna. Hi, Sam. How are you doing? I'm Rishna. I'm a Christian. Good, good. I'm sister. from Indonesia. I'm oh, from bless. Indonesia. Lord bless you. God bless you too. Do you have a question for me? You don't have a question? I just want to say, I just want to say thank you because I learned something more beautiful about Christianity, about our Lord, Lord Jesus from Amen. you. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless your household, your children. Fill you with the Holy Spirit. Fill you with love for the Lord Jesus Christ. May the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse you in all of us and protect you in Indonesia because Indonesia has the highest, largest number of Muslims. Yes. And here we are fight every day because yeah, I'm from the Indonesian part of East part of Indonesia and yes. In each part of Indonesia, is we are Christianity is open-handed about huh? the uh, yeah about our friends Muslim and we didn't disturb them when they want to build mosque there and make everything that they want in our land. But mm -hmm. when in the West Lord, part of the Indonesian yeah. is the most difficult thing about yes. our friends' Christianity because there, when we want to build a great a church, is always being disturbed by our friends, and exactly. they say that we cannot build church here. The yeah, always make something so horrible about yes they give you a hard time we know they hinder you mm. they don't give you the freedom yeah. to practice the gospel preach the gospel build churches but that's why we need to be praying for you and ask god to do a miracle and protect you in that land from harm and give you the boldness not to compromise but also to be wise and glorifying jesus so we will be praying for you resna and all the christians in indonesia because it's hard for you but don't give up and don't give in. Jesus is almighty over Muhammad and Allah, right? Yes. And I believe that Lord Jesus already um, tell us in the Bible that anti-Christian will come and will, be, will give all the Christianity a hard time. But who stand until the last, he will... Amen. 
Yeah. Here in the Lord, Matthew 24, 13. Amen. And may all of us Amen. remain faithful and he preserves us to never betray or deny or blaspheme the Lord Jesus Christ. So we love you, sister. You stay strong and the Lord protect your family and grow in love with Jesus. And may you be bold. And may the spirit give you strength to never back down in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you, sister. Anytime you need anything, reach out to me. God bless you too, Sam. Rest now. You're, you have a voice of an angel, and may you use your voice to glorify Christ. Take care, sister. Bye-bye. Okay, that was a sister in the Lord. Now, you heard about the situation about the Indonesians, right? Muslims don't allow them to build churches and give them a hard time, so they have no choice but to try to coexist because it's the largest concentration of Muslims in the world. Indonesia has the largest majority of Muslims. Second is India. Pray for the church. Pray that the God of the church will arise, who's almighty, to make them bold and wise, not to compromise, not to betray Jesus, not to lie, but also to choose the words so they can be as unnecessarily offensive towards Muhammad, because in their situation, all they can do is just preach Jesus. And that's all you need to do. Jesus says, I, when I am lifted up, will draw all mine to myself. They don't have the freedom to criticize Muhammad like we do. But they have the freedom to just say, hey, I love Jesus. He's the son of God. Here's why. Here's why we believe the Bible. So pray for their boldness and protection. May the Lord come to avenge the blood of his martyrs and the persecution of his church. That's why we punish Muhammad here where we are allowed to and have the freedom to do so. Okay, brethren. Let's now segue into Muhammad being an inconsistent, hypocrite, and sexual deviant. If you go to my description box, here's the article that we will be using for the second part. Here it is. I just published it earlier today. Now, here's what I'm going to ask everyone to do. I already anticipate a Muslim objection, a way that Muslims are going to try to refute my argument, and I already refute it in the post. It has to do with rev revocable and irrevocable marriage. And I'll explain that in a minute. I already, by the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ, anticipate what their objection will be and refuted it thoroughly. So if you understand what you read, they can't prove you wrong. And Lord willing, if a Mohammedan comes on and wants to challenge me, I will love to have a Mohammedan use that very argument I anticipate they'll use to show you that the arguments that the Spirit gives us, if you properly understand them and properly share them, irrefutable because your weapons are indestructible because you serve the Almighty God. They don't. But with that said, let me first <clears throat> lay the, the foundation. According to Muslim tradition, Muhammad divorced his wife Hafsa Binta Binta, Bint Omar ibn al-Khattab. Omar ibn al-Khattab. Omar was Muhammad's second best friend. His first best friend was Abu Bakr, according to Sunnis, and he was the second caliph. Muhammad married his daughter Hafsa. Hafsa bint Omar. According to the Muslim sources, Hafsa got Muhammad so angry because she had a witty tongue. He divorced her, but then Allah sent Jibreel to command him, force him to take her back because she fasts and prays. So he had to take her back after divorcing her and sending her back to her parents' home. Now let me play Sheikh Asim al-Hakim affirming this, and then I'm going to read the sources and show you why this proves Muhammad is a hypocrite, a sexual deviant, and why the Quran is an abomination to God's true word. So you guys ready for the second part? For a late night, we're not doing bad in numbers. May the numbers increase for the glory of the Lord. Oh, you reminded me. I forgot 1 Timothy 2. Darn it. I forgot to do 1 Timothy. Let me do 1 Timothy real quickly. Because he mentioned 1 Timothy 2, 5 to 6. Real quickly, guys. It won't take me long. My apologies. Because he mentioned that Paul said there's one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Let me now knock that out of the park. 1 Timothy 2, 5 to 6. For there is one God and one mediator... Between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be te testified in due time. Let me finish this and do justice to this. Sorry, guys. I knew I forgot something. Here it is. All right. Now, does this help his case any? Because Paul is saying 
We, we have right now a mediator before God right now in heaven. The man Christ Jesus. And no one denies that Jesus is man unless you're a Jehovah Witness heretic. So Paul is saying right now in heaven, there's a glorified man with a glorified physical body who's mediating before the one God, the Father, on our behalf. And he does so on the basis of offering his soul, offering himself, his body, as a ransom for all, which will be made manifest in due time when he comes. And all those that have believed in him, they will then be revealed as the ones who've been saved and glorified because of Jesus' ransom. That's what Paul means and says, to be testified in due time. What does that mean? It means that in due time, you will see all those that Jesus ransomed by his blood, by his sacrifice on Calvary, how many he saved on the basis of his sacrificial death, all those who trusted in him, right? Because right now we see by the eyes of faith, we believe that if we belong to Christ, we're saved. But the reality of that salvation, the reality of what he's saving us from is future because he's saving us from God's judgment and wrath and destruction so that we can dwell in his presence forever. Well, that hasn't happened yet. So when it happens, this will then fully manifest and confirm the fact that we already accept by faith. Jesus ransomed us by his blood, by his sacrificial death to unite us to God. Can you understand what Paul is saying? Do you understand what Paul is saying? To be testified in due time? Everyone got it before I move on? I can't move on if you don't get it. Okay. So does this agree with the Quran that says Jesus didn't die to ransom anyone? Why would you quote 1 Timothy 2.5 and ignore verse 6? where we're told that Jesus ransomed all mankind, but his ransom is only appropriated credit to your account when you trust in him as your mediator and savior, all of which contradicts the Quran and Islam, which denies that Jesus ransomed anyone on the cross. Why would he ignore verse 6? But then why would he ignore this, this other one? 1 Timothy 6, 14 to 16. I'm going to wrap it up here and go to Muhammad. Why did he then ignore what Paul goes on to say in 1 Timothy 6, 14 to 16? Watch this. Can you explain to me why he ignores that? Watch here. That you keep his command without spot, blameless, now watch, until our Lord Jesus Christ appearing. Now, guys, pay attention. He's our Lord Jesus Christ. Does Jalal believe that Jesus is Rabb, Rabbul Alameen, Lord, Lord of all beings? Rabbul Nas, Lord of mankind? No. But Paul says that Jesus is our Lord who's going to appear physically, bodily, once again, when he comes to the earth to judge the living and the dead. That's why you do all you can to yield to the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to enable you to keep the commands of Christ blameless and spotless. So when he comes, he will reward you and glorify you, not punish you. Now watch the pronouns, who Jesus is. Are you ready? Guys, I can't move on if you're not paying attention. Are you ready? Who is this Jesus? Not only is our Lord, Rabbul Alameen, the Lord of all beings, Rabbul Nas, the Lord of mankind. Again, Jalal doesn't accept because it contradicts the Quran. Watch here. Guess who this Jesus is? Okay. Yeah, Jesus is Lord. The link to the stream is up there. If you don't come for me to answer this question, I'm going to block you. Because if you couldn't refute that objection by the Muslim, man, you got issues. Okay. So, which he will manifest in his own time. Now catch the pronouns. There's our sister Resna. Who is the he? Who will manifest it in his own time? Follow the pronouns. He will manifest, will reveal in his own time. 
Well, that means you're a troll. That's why I blocked you. So you got to get out of here. Because if you're blocked on StreamYard, that means you're a troll coming under a different nick. Get them out of here, guys. All right. So for the rest of you, because this demon who's pretending to be a Christian is distracting us. Look, look what we're talking about. Look what he's mentioning. And you wonder why he got blocked. May God have mercy on you. Okay. Okay, folks. Let's see if you can tell me who the pronouns are. Help me, guys. Class has begun. Let the Holy Spirit teach. Keep this commandment without spot blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ appearing. Until Jesus appears. Now tell me who the pronouns refer to, which he will manifest in his own time. So guys, tell me, who is the he? Who's he and his? Who's Paul referring to? Let's see if you guys read context. Because you got to read carefully, understand what you see, hear, and read. Otherwise, you're going to drop the ball. It says he will manifest in his own time. Who is he? He who will make this known and reveal it. In whose own time? Come on. Tell me who it is. If not, I'm going to start blocking people. Come on, class. Okay. Two people answered so far. Come on. All right. Four people answered so far. Five, actually. Come on. A few more. You got it. Jesus. All right. Okay. You got it. Jesus is the object, the referent of the pronouns, the masculine pronouns. So let me now insert the word Jesus to see what Paul just told you about Jesus. Good, Helson. You got it. All right. Watch here. Okay. Blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ appearing, which Jesus will manifest in Jesus' own time. Jesus, who is the blessed and only potentate, only potentate, only sovereign ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Jesus is the only potentate who's happy, the King of kings and Lord of lords. And Jesus alone has immortality, meaning Jesus by his very nature is immortal. Though he became man, became flesh, and as a man experienced death. But as a divine person, he never dies. As a divine person, he's ever living. Because immortality is an essential characteristic that he possesses by his very nature. And Jesus is dwelling in unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see. And that's what happened to Paul when he saw the light that Jesus Closed himself with, knocked Paul to the ground and blinded him. Acts 9, verses 1 and 9. He got blinded. So Paul is recalling his experience when Jesus' light shone. Couldn't see it. It blinded me. To Jesus be honor, everlasting power. Amen. Once again, does Jalal accept this? Does this agree with Islam? Does Islam... Agree, Jesus Christ is the happy and only sovereign potentate, King of kings and Lord of lords, and that Jesus alone possesses immortality. He alone is immortal by nature, and that's why he has to then give you the grace of immortality because immortality is not something we possess intrinsically, intrinsically or by nature. It is a gift, but Jesus by Necessity is immortal. By his very nature as God is immortal. Does the Quran agree that Jesus dwells in unapproachable light that will blind you if you try to see it? And does the Quran ascribe eternal honor and power to Jesus Christ to whom be honor and everlasting power? Amen. A doxology where Jesus is being praised and glorified. Disagrees with Jalal Abu Larub. Disagrees with the Quran. Disagrees with Muhammad. Disagrees with Allah. When in the Hadith, it says, the one title that Allah hates more than anything is the man who calls himself King of Kings. And yet here, Paul calls Jesus King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And in Revelation 17, 14, Revelation 17, 14, Jesus revealed to John, revealed to John that he's the Lamb who will conquer all the kings of the earth and will defeat them because he's the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And in Revelation 19, 16, we are told that Jesus comes on a white horse who's the word of God with a sword from his mouth to slay the false prophet and the beast and their armies. 
who had a sword of his mouth, and he will conquer and destroy them because he has on his thigh and his robe written the names, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So Revelation 17, 14, Revelation 19, 16, 1 Timothy 6, 16 says, Jesus is King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Lord of Lords, King of Kings. But according to the traditions attributed to Muhammad, Allah hates anyone who calls himself King of Kings. Here it is. Phil gave you the link. Let me let me bring it up. Lord Jesus, please, I pray I'm not loud and rude to my neighbors. I pray they sleep soundly. Please, Lord. Here it is. King of Kings. Why didn't he quote this part of Paul? Here it is. Sal Bukhari, Volume 6, Book 60, Hadith 336. 336. Three, Here it is. Let me post it for you. Here's the link. Let's let's quote it. Book 65, Prophetic Commentary in the Quran, Tafsir of the Prophet. Chapter 3. Look what it says. Chapter 3. Let me post it so we can read it. Right here. Okay. And let's read the Hadith. Narrated Abu Huraira, I heard Allah's messenger saying, <clears throat> Allah will hold the whole earth and roll all the heavens up in his right hand. And then he will say, I'm the king. Where are the kings of the earth? Meaning, he's the king of all kings. So bring me the kings of the earth. Where are they? Here it is. I am the king. Where are the kings of the earth? Then I'm going to show you where it says he hates Anyone who calls himself king of kings. Here it is. I am the king. Where are the kings of the earth? But Jesus says to John, I'm the king of kings and lord of lords. Jesus inspires Paul by the Holy Spirit to bear witness that Jesus is the king of kings and lord of lords. Now let's see what Allah says about the one who calls himself king of kings. Here it is. There you go. Right here. All right, let's get it. Al-Adab al-Mufrad, great Sahih by Al-Albani. It's also in Bukhari, but hold on. Oh, it is, everything's going haywire. Sorry, guys. I'm getting distracted. Here it is. Let's quote it. Book 34 names, chapter 358, chapter the names which Allah Almighty hates the most. This is found in Bukhari and Muslim. Bukhari Muslim. In fact, Al-Adab al-Mufrad is by Imam al-Bukhari. It's one of his works. A lot of people don't know that Bukhari wrote more than Sahih Muslim. But look what he says here. Watch here. Okay, watch here. The names which Allah Almighty hates the most. Okay. Abu Huraira reported that the Messenger of Allah may Jesus Christ damn him to hell and erase his name from the earth, said, the name which hates the most is that a man be called the King of Kings. A man be called king of kings, Allah hates that the most. And this is from Bukhari's work, Al-Adab Al-Mufrad, Book 34, Hadith 817. Here it is, so you can see it. And it's great, Sahih. It's a Sahih narration. Okay, there you go. See it? Sahih, great Sahih Al-Albani. Al-Adab Al-Mufrad. That is another work of Bukhari. In English, it's Book 34, Hadith 817. So, did we now prove that 1 Timothy in context destroys Islam, destroys Muhammad, destroys the Quran, destroys all of the Quran as a fraud, and exposes Jalal as a pervert who, like his father devil, perverts scripture to shame and humiliation? Did I establish that point so I can move on to the next? Can I move on to the next? Or are you guys tired and you want me to do Muhammad being the inconsistent, vile, sexual deviant some other time? You want me to continue? I'm here for you guys. Let me know. Okay, good. But please make sure you understood all these facts. If you understood these facts... And seek the face of the Holy Spirit to perfect your ability to understand, absorb, recall, and share, and live out for the glory of Christ. And pray that for me. 
If you understood the facts, you will be irrefutable in spiritual battle. You will be the nightmare of every anti-Trinitarian and anti-Christian. They will hate you and fear you because they can't refute you. They'll even try to kill you, but don't be afraid. Your lives are in the hands of Jesus, our Lord. He's alive and Muhammad is dead. Okay? So let's continue the point. Muhammad divorced Hafsa bint Omar. Muhammad divorced Hafsa bint Omar. But then Allah sent Jibreel, the fake Gabriel, to command Muhammad to take her back as his wife because she prays and fasts. Keep that in mind. I'm now going to play Sheikh Asim al-Hakim. Sheikh Asim al-Hakim. Two of his clips. And then I'm going to read the Sahih narrations. And you're going to see what an inconsistent sexual deviant Muhammad was. And what an abomination the Quran is in the sight of the true God. And it's all in that post. I gave you the link to the post. Okay. Let me get it for you again. Here it is. Muhammad divorcing and remarrying Hafsa. I put it in the description box and I'll pin it as a comment later. Okay. Let's now hear from the Sheikh. Sheikh Asim al-Hakim, my favorite, my favorite Salafi scholar. Even though he says he's a student of knowledge, not a scholar. Let's listen. Okay. Here you go. And I'll give you a link so you can go and watch it online. Here it is. Does Allah hate divorce? Does Allah hate divorce? If so, why was Prophet divorced? Asim, Asim al-Hakim, June 14, 2020. Posted on his YouTube page. Asim al-Hakim. Here it is. Let's play it. Okay? Let's play it. Listen to what he says. Let's play. Let me see if the cat's coming. So Rayan's second question, he said that the uh, Allah Azza wa Jal hates most divorce no this is not true this is a statement laymen usually circulate and they say halal ilallah at-talaq. the most abhorred halal thing to allah is talaq and this is not true sometimes it is so loved by allah Azza wa Jal, that you reward it for divorce depending on how evil your wife is so someone is married to a woman to only to discover that she is a prostitute and he keeps staying married to her while she's still working the nights. Definitely he has he has to divorce her and is rewarded for divorcing such an evil woman. So divorce can be halal, can be haram, can be mandatory. It depends on the situation. And he says that the prophet was a divorcee. No, this is not true. The Prophet, throughout our series, Women Around the Prophet, we told you that in an incident, he divorced Hafsa. Did you hear it? He divorced Hafsa. Divorced Hafsa. But he's not a divorcee because he took her back. Pay attention. So I'll play his other clip where he does about a 30-minute presentation on Hafsa. Listen. The daughter of Umar for something that she had done. And it wasn't that he did not love her, but because of what she had done, he divorced her only to get Jibril coming from the seventh heaven, ordering him to revoke the divorce and reconcile with her. Because this is the instruction of Allah Azza wa Jal. She's a woman that prays and fasts. So the Prophet revoked the divorce. But he was a divorcee? No, that he was not a divorcee, alayhi salatu was salam. Okay, did you hear that? He said Muhammad divorced her, but Allah sent Jibreel commanding him, take her back as your wife because she prays and fasts. So he wasn't a divorcee because he didn't stay divorced. He took her back. You guys heard it, right? You guys heard it? Because watch what's going to happen. Now let's play another clip of his. This comes from May 11, 2020. From his YouTube channel, As As Asim Al Hakim, and I'm going to give you the link. Hafsa bint Amar, woman around the Prophet. Okay, here's the link. We're going to play from the one minute mark and listen for the first two minutes. Listen to this, okay, guys? Listen, because you're going to see what an inconsistent sexual deviant Muhammad was, and this teaching of the Quran, what an abomination it is in the sight of the true God, and why God hates this command. So let's play. What does he say about Hafsa? Allahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. 
Our guest for tonight is a woman unlike other women, a mother of the believers who is someone to stand on her own, a companion that is known for things that other companions did not have, a wife of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, whom Allah azza wa jal sent his archangel Jibreel, peace be upon him, Listen. to rule something Listen. of her destiny. destiny, something that was essential in her life. Jibreel, who does not come down to earth except for mega things and important things. Jibreel, the fake Gabriel, does not come down except for important mega issues and things. Listen. So he came down because this was a mega issue, a mega important thing. Listen. Came for this important issue. And that is that the Prophet Alaihissalam revokes her divorce, reconciles with her for a reason that we will come to discuss later on, inshallah. Did you hear it? Jibreel does not come for petty issues. He comes down for mega things, important things, a mega issue. And he came down to revoke the divorce. Notice he divorced her. Final, done with her. She went to her parents' house. Jibreel said, Allah said, take her back because she prays and fast. So you had to revoke the divorce. Are you guys hearing it? I can't move on if you're not getting it, guys. And I gave you the link. It's right there. Because you're going to see why this is going to be embarrassing to the Muslims. And in my post, I anticipate an objection and refute it. You owe it to yourself, and it's your duty to read my post carefully and understand it. So if they bring the objection, you're ready to destroy that lie. Because I already anticipated what they're going to say. And Lord willing, maybe in a future session we'll deal with it. But I'm waiting for Muhammad to come and challenge me and try to catch me with that objection to see how far he gets. So you can see that these arguments by the power of the Holy Spirit are irrefutable because we try to give the most sound, accurate arguments that we test in actual spiritual battle so you can be confident in the power of the Holy Spirit. You are warriors that cannot be defeated if you're glorifying Jesus Christ. Okay, now, same video. We're going to go to the 21-minute 42 second mark because he goes in depth on the divorce. May the Holy Spirit make my voice powerful and pleasing to yours and strengthen my throat. 21 minute, 42 second mark. Watch here. 21 minute, 42 second mark. Watch what he says, guys. You got to pay attention. Listen. Now, for one reason or the other, can you hear? The Prophet والسلام, divorced Hafsa. And that was a huge shock to her father, the close friend of the Prophet ﷺ, to her family. Listen. Qudama and Uthman ibn Mad'un, her maternal uncles, and to herself, of course. The Prophet's divorce, والسلام, for Hafsa, was not due to hatred. He loved her. Loved her. But it was to reprimand her for something we don't have knowledge of. Speculations are there. They don't know why he divorced her. Are you listening? Guys, please let me know if you can hear him. We know he divorced her. Doesn't mean he hated her, he loved her. But something happened that was so serious, got him so upset, he divorced her. He finished it. He was done with her. We don't know why. There are theories, there are speculations. Maybe because she spread the secret that the Prophet told her not to tell anyone. Maybe it was because this, it was because that. This is none of our business. None but of our business. We have to acknowledge that it took place. Now, due to who Hafsa was, may Allah be pleased with her, Allah sent down his archangel Jibreel, if, 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 peace if, be upon him. If, and if. he told the Prophet والسلام, O Muhammad, if, if. revoke the divorce and reconcile with Hafsa. Revoke the divorce and reconcile with Hafsa. If it wasn't an irrevocable, irrevocable divorce that was a final divorce, 
meaning marriage is over. There's nothing to revoke if it wasn't an actual final irrevocable divorce. Keep that in mind. Get her back as your wife. If, For if. she is a woman that fasts all the time. That's where I'm going with this, Rob Christian. That's my latest post. Watch. Hold on. Genius. You're smart too, sir. You're not as dumb as Christian Prince looks. And praise night prayer every night. Take her back. And she is your wife in paradise. Full stop. The directive came. So the Prophet immediately, alayhi salam, complied. Look at the description. She is a woman who frequently fasts and frequently prays night prayer. These attributes make her a gem that should be preserved. So regardless of the reason that you had divorced her for, get her back. And the Prophet ﷺ complied with that command immediately. Now, Rob already anticipated where I'm going with this. It's all in my article. I put in the description box and you see the link on the screen. Pay attention how bad it's going to get. So Allah is the one who sent Jibreel to tell Muhammad, revoke your divorce, meaning it's an irrevo irrevocable, irrevocable, irrevocable divorce. It was final. He was done with her. No, take her back. She's a woman who prays and fasts. So he took her back, meaning... He reinstated the marriage. Now watch two more minutes and watch the nightmare because Rob already saw it. See, when I first discovered this, I said, oh, what a hypocrite. What a wicked, vile hypocrite. And how he dishonors his own followers. You're going to see. And got her back. Now, in this, we can also learn that divorce can happen even among the pious, even, even among the righteous and practicing. This is not something that is prohibited. It is not something that the laymen say often that the throne of Allah Azza wa Jal is shaken for divorce and that it is the worst halal thing to Allah. This is not true. Sometimes divorce is mandatory. If you don't do it, you're sinful. Listen to this. Depending on the scenario. Listen to this. Sometimes it's recommended. Sometimes it's permissible. Sometimes it's not recommended, it's makruh. makruh. And sometimes it's totally prohibited. A wise man was contemplating on divorcing his wife. One more minute. So a man came to him and said, why are you contemplating on divorcing your wife? So he said, subhanAllah, a gentleman is not asked about such things. A gentleman does not tell. How do you want me to expose my wife's shortcomings to you? And after a few months or years after he divorced her the same man came to him and said why did you divorce your wife so the wise man said looking at him and this is none of my business she's someone else's wife now why would i tell you mm -hmm. so concealing the secrets is very important and hence we don't know why he divorced her for we don't know do you hear it we do not know why Muhammad divorced Hafsa, ended the marriage, so that Allah had to send Jibreel to command and force Muhammad to reinstate the marriage and take her back. We don't know. But whatever she did, she got him really angry. But we don't know what it is. Speculation. Listen. But we know that divorce is something that is mentioned in the Quran. Allah Azza wa Jal made a, a, a whole surah, a chapter by the title of surah divorce and talaq. the rules are mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah and elsewhere to tell you that this is something which is part of religion such as marriage, such as reconcile, reconciliation after divorce. Okay, that's it. Now, Rob already saw where I was going with this because the Lord has blessed him with a sharp mind. Did you hear what he said? Muhammad divorced Hafsa. It was irrevocable, meaning irrevocable. Some pronounce it irrevocable. It wasn't a revocable, revocable. It was, he was done with her. She was done with him. She went back to the house. That's why Jibil came down and said, Allah orders you take her back, reinstate the marriage. 
and cancel the divorce because she's a woman who prays and fasts. And let me give you the hadith. This is all in the paper. I just posted it for you guys to use. Here it is again. Watch here. We're going to have some fun. Okay, there it goes. Okay, now let me quote some of the hadiths. We're going to quote some of the hadiths and then show you what Rob saw because Muhammad is inconsistent and it even shows you that Muhammad realized this command is dishonorable, disgraceful, and shameful, and it's meant to disgrace and humiliate the men and women who get divorced. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. Here it is. Here it is from <clears throat> Sunan Abu Dawood. Here's the link. It's all in the article. Sunan Abu Dawood. It's a Sahih narration. Sahih. Here you go. What does it say? <clears throat> Book 13, Kitab al-Talaq, the book of divorce, chapter 754, regarding taking divorced women back. Taking divorced women back. Guys, get ready. Get ready for this. Divorced women back. Okay? Let's post it. I'm going to quote just the Hadith. I quote a lot of others. I quote Tabari and I quote Sayyuti, all, but I'm just going to quote the Hadith for the sake of time. Narrated Omar ibn al-Khattab. Guess who's narrating it? Hafsa's father. Narrated Omar ibn al-Khattab. Omar ibn al-Khattab. What does he narrate? What do you narrate, buddy? All right. The prophet divorced Hafsa, but he took her back in marriage. Took her back in marriage, meaning they were no longer married. Keep that in mind. Don't let them, because in my article, I refute a, an objection that I know they're going to raise because they think they're slick. But we have the Holy Spirit who's all wise and gives us wisdom to think several steps ahead to destroy their blasphemy and obliterate their objections. Yep, Sheikh, you got it, man. Sheikh Shabr got it. But don't let the cat out of the bag yet. You and Rob Christian got it. All right. Now, is this Sahih? Okay, let's see. Great. Sahih. Sahih. It's sound. Yeah. Sound. Here you go. Now, let's go to the other versions. This was Sunan Abu Dawood. It's all in my paper. Now, here's another one. This one is from... Ibn Majah, Sunan Ibn Majah, book 10, the chapters on divorce, chapter 1, divorce, this is graded, Sahih, in the English it's volume 3, book 10, Hadith 2016, watch here, ah, Black Angel got it, man, you guys are geniuses, bro, damn, you're smart, damn, damn, man, you're genius, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, here you go. It was narrated from Omar ibn Khattab that the messenger of Allah divorced Hafsa, then took her back. Okay. What's the grade here? So you guys don't think we're making it up. What's the grade here? Aha. Uh -huh. Why, 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 why? Watch here. Bye, bye. Bye, 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 bye. Watch here. The final one. And now the problem. Let's get a drum roll. This also is... A Sahih narration, and it's from Sunan Nasai. Sunan Nasai. Sunan Nasai. It's also Sahih, great Sahih. Book 27, the book of divorce, Kitab al Talaq, chapter 76, taking the wife back. Here's the link, it's all in my post. Now get ready for the nightmare. Get ready for the nightmare, sirs, ma'ams. All right. Again, it's Omar, her father, narrating it. Omar, her father, narrating it. All right. Watch here. It was narrated from Omar that the prophet, Amr, one of the narrators, said, the Messenger of Allah had divorced Hafsa. Then he took her back, and Allah knows best. All right. What's the grade? All right. Here you go. Now, what's the problem, folks? In Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 230. Surah Al-Baqarah. Chapter 2, verse 230. It says, when a man has irrevocably divorced his wife, final divorce, he cannot take her back until she marries another man, and that man divorces her. And that man who marries her and divorces her makes her halal, meaning lawful, for her to go back to her husband. Halala, muhallal, tahlil. 
Now let me read Ibn Kathir's exposition of chapter 2, verse 229 to 230, which you can find online for free on alam.org, and I link to it. All you do is pay for internet, man. Look at how much information God has given us to spoil us. Here's the link. Alam.org. Click on it. His exposition of chapter 2, verse 229 and 230. Here it is. Okay. Look what he says. Let's go through it. Let's look what he says. Okay. A man who irrevocably divorces his wife. Now, let me explain what irrevocable or irrevocable, some pronounce it irrevocable divorce is. In Islam, if you say to your wife, I divorce you three times, talak, 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 then she's divorced irrevocably. Now, there's a debate among Muslims whether you are supposed to say it on separate occasions. So I can't say it all at once. Talak, talak, talak. It won't count. It'll count as one because I have to say it on different days. And the jurists say the reason why, because you may say it out of anger, but if you give yourself some time, you come back to your senses and you don't mean it. So there are some who say, if you say it three times, talak, 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 it counts. Some say, no, that's only one. You got to come back the next day or another day and say it two more other times, but you got to say it three times. Okay. Okay, now, once you do that, you cannot take her back. You cannot take her back until she marries another man and he has sex with her and then divorces her. Here it goes. And I quote this lengthy passage from Ibn Kathir. The wife cannot be taken back after the third divorce. Here it is. Let's read. And I'm going to quote the relevant parts, and we're almost done. Hope you guys are not bored. Allah said, and if he has divorced her the third time, then she's not lawful for him thereafter until she has married another husband. This ayah indicates that if the man divorces his wife for the third time, after he divorced her twice, then she will no longer be allowed for marriage to him. Allah said, watch, guys. And I'm going to quote. I'm going to plaster it. Until she has married another husband, meaning... Until she legally marries another man. For instance, if she ha has sexual intercourse with any man, even her master, if she was a, a servant, she would still be ineligible for marriage for her ex-husband who divorced her thrice because whomsoever she had sexual relations with was not her legal husband. So she can't even have sex with a master. She has to have sex with a husband once she's married to legally. Okay, here it is. Let me continue reading. If she marries a man without consummating the marriage, she will not be eligible for husband. So she gets married, but they don't have sex. Then she's not lawful. She can't go back. She cannot go back to her husband. You catching what's happening? Catching what's happening? Okay, so let's finish it. Muslim reported that Aisha said that Allah's messenger was asked about a woman who marries a man who thereafter divorces her thrice. You know, that's irrevocable divorce. She then marries another man and he divorces her before he has sexual relations with her. Would she be allowed? Would she be allowed? <clears throat> For her first husband, Allah's messenger said, watch here. Watch here, guys. Allah's messenger said, what did he say? No, until he enjoys her. Usayla. Until Usayla enjoys her. What does Usayla mean? Sexual relations. Al-Bukhari also reported this hadith. No, if they got married, but he didn't enjoy her sexually. Usayla. He didn't have sex with her, penetrate. She can't go back to her first husband. Okay. Imam Ahmed recorded that Aisha said the wife of Rifah al Qurazi came while I and Abu Bakr were with the Prophet, and she said, I was Rifa'ah's wife, but he divorced me, and it was an irrevocable divorce. <clears throat> then I married Abdurrahman bin Az Zubair, but his sexual organ is minute like a string. He's small and impotent. She then took a small string of her garment to resemble how small his sexual organ was. Wow, 
these women were brutal, man. Sounds like my ex-wife. God have mercy on all of us. Okay, there you go. All right, now, Khalid bin uh, Sayyid bin Al As, who was next to the door and was not yet allowed, and said, Oh, Abu Bakr, why do you not forbid this woman from what she is revealing, frankly, before the Prophet? The Prophet merely smiled. Then Allah's Messenger asked her, Here you go, watch what he says. Uh huh. What does Allah's Messenger say? <whistles> Very nice. Look at this. Look at this. And Allah's Messenger answered, Do you want to remarry Rifa'? You cannot unless you experience his Usayla. And he experiences your Usayla, i.e., had a complete sexual relation with your present husband. Al Bukhari, Muslim Nasai, also recorded this hadith. Muslims' wording is Rifa' divorces his wife for the third and final time. So, what must she and he do? Must taste each other's usayla. Give me your usayla, woman. Have sex and penetrate or she can't go back. All right. Now look what it says here. This is Ibn Kathir. He, he then explains to you what it means. Okay. Here it is. It's not me. Ibn Kathir. The word usayla mentioned in the hadith means sexual intercourse. Imam Ahmed and Nasai. Reported, Aisha said that Allah's messenger said, what did he say? Usayla is sexual intercourse. Sexual intercourse. Okay, now there's another section in, Bukhar, in Ibn Khathir on this passage that's interesting. Okay, what's interesting? The curse on the participants. Tahlil halala. Tahlil halala. So it was obvious that people were getting family or friends to have sex with their divorced spouses, penetrate them, and divorce them so they can take them back. So here there are curses on those who make a woman lawful to return to her husband if the intention was not to legitimately marry the divorced woman. The tahlil halala. So. I end up marrying a divorced woman, have sex with her, only to divorce her so I can make her lawful for her husband. Allah curses me because I didn't really marry her because I wanted to marry her to be with her. I just did it to have sex with her so I can make her lawful for her previous husband. So Allah curses you if you do that. The tahlil and halala. You're cursed, buddy. All right, so let's read what it says. The reason for the woman who was divorced thrice to marry another man must be that the man desires her and he has the intention of having an extended married life with her. See, it's got to be true desire and he wants to stay with her. He doesn't want to divorce her. These are the legal goals and aims behind marriage. <clears throat> if the reason behind the second marriage was to make the woman eligible for her ex-husband, then this is the tahlil that the hadiths have cursed and criticized. Uh-huh, so the Muslims were doing it. And so they came up with hadiths where Muhammad curses you. In addition, when the reason behind this marriage, if it was tahlil, is announced in the contract, it would make the contract invalid according to the majority of the scholars. That I'm marrying her so I can have sex with her, so I can divorce her, so she can go back to her husband. Then that's not a valid marriage. <clears throat> according to the ijma of the ulama, the consensus of the scholars. Imam Ahmed reported that Abdullah ibn Masood said, Allah's messenger curse the one who does tahlil, the one whose favor it is done, those who eat ribba, usury, and those who feed it, pay the usury. At Tirmidhi and Nasai, Nasai reported this hadith, and Tirmidhi said, This hadith is hasa, meaning good. He said, This is what is acted upon according to the people of knowledge among the companions, among who are Umar, Uthman, and Ibn Umar. It was also the saying of the scholars of fiqh, Islamic jurisprudence, among the tabi'een. Right, the followers of Muhammad's companions, second generation of Islam. And it has been reported from Ali ibn Masood and ibn Abbas. Almost done. And it's Mustadrak. Al-Hakim reported that Nafi said, a man came to ibn Umar and asked him about a man who divorced his wife three times. Watch here. Then his brother married her to make tahlil 
for his brother without the brother knowing this fact. So my brother decided to go marry my ex-wife, have sex with her and divorce her so I can take her back, unbeknownst to me. He didn't tell me that. So what's the ruling? He didn't tell me that's what he did. He then asked, is she allowed for the first husband? He said, no, unless it is a marriage that involves desire. We used to consider this an act of adultery during the time of Allah's Messenger. Al-Hakim said, this hadith has a sahih chain, although they, Al-Bukhari Muslim, do not record it. The wording of this hadith <clears throat> indicates that the ruling came from the Prophet, Abu Bakr bin Abu Shayba, Al-Jawzjani, Harb al-Kirmani, and Abu Bakr al-Athram said that Kabisa bin Jabir said that Omar, that's the second caliph, said, if the participants to Tahlil are brought to me, I will have them stoned. There you go. Okay. Does everyone see what the problem is? According to Muhammad's God, in his book, you cannot take your wife back that you have irrevocably divorced unless she marries someone, has sex with him, and he divorces her. And the marriage was a legitimate one where he didn't have an intention of divorcing her. How is it then that Muhammad took back Hafsa without his God demanding she obey his rule and legislation? Hafsa never married someone else and had sex with someone else and was divorced by someone else. And yet Allah sent Gabriel to tell Muhammad, take her back immediately and reinstate her as your wife. So Allah allowed Muhammad to break Allah's own command that you cannot take your divorced wife back, who's irrevocably divorced, unless she marries someone else, has sex with him, penetration takes place, and then divorces her, and then you take her back. Allah overruled this command for Muhammad and Hafsa. You see what he did? That's the problem. You caught it? You see what he did? But what does this tell you, really? What does this tell you, really? Here's what it tells you. Muhammad knew how disgraceful how shameful, how dishonorable, how despicable it is to have your ex-wife first marry someone and have sex with him, allow a man to ravage her sexually, and only then, after he divorces her, to take her back, knowing another man has defiled her. So this was Allah's way and Muhammad's way of dishonoring, shaming, humiliating the woman and the man who divorced. You understand? Because Muhammad knew this is something shameful, despicable, humiliating, and filthy that I have to make sure my ex-wife marries someone and has sex with him, actual intercourse, penetration, and that marriage was legit and somehow didn't work out for me to then take her back. He knew that this is something despicable and shameful and dishonorable for the man and the woman, but he still enjoyed it anyway but he absolved himself of following that command because he couldn't allow Hafsa to be defiled and ravished by another man because he couldn't allow himself to be disgraced that way and humiliated that way. You see the respect that Muhammad and his God have for Muhammad's followers? No respect. They enjoin a shameful, wicked, humiliating, dishonorable practice on the man and the woman who are divorced Something that even Muhammad knew was so disgusting and dishonorable that he would not even allow that for his own wife, but took her back without requiring her to have sex with another man in marriage and to be divorced. That tells you that Allah and Muhammad dishonored their own followers, disrespected their own followers, had no respect for the Muslim men and women who followed Muhammad and loved him more than their own life and were willing to die and kill for him. See what a wicked man he is? And on top of that, this demand that the man can only take back his wife if she has married someone legitimately and he has penetrated her sexually and divorced her, according to the true God, 
This practice is an abomination. It's wicked, and God hates it and abhors it. Because let's read. Here it is. From God's true word. God's true word. Deuteronomy 24, verses 1 of 4. Deuteronomy 24, verses 1 of 4. Let's read, guys. What does God's true word say about what Muhammad's God said is the only way you can take back your ex-wife. Let's read. You ready? Let me open it up. Hold on. Let me read it. Watch here. Look at the difference. What Allah says is the only way to take back your wife. The true God says it's an abomination. It is disgusting. It's despicable because the true God realizes how humiliating this is for the woman and the man. And because God loves the woman and the man, he would not allow his true children, his true servants to be humiliated and disgraced in this manner. But Allah and Muhammad don't care. Here you go. Let's read it. Okay. Uh, okay, hold on, man. This uh, it it went backwards. Sorry about that. Yep. Per, hold on. For some reason, when I posted it, it came in the wrong order. Order. Hold on. Let's try this again. Let's try this again. It came in the wrong order. One more time, guys. I don't know what happened. Right. Okay, here you go. When a man takes a wife and marries her, and it happens that she finds no favor in his eyes because he has found some uncleanness in her, and he writes her a certificate of divorce, puts it in her hand, sends her out of his house. When she has departed from his house and goes and becomes another man's wife, if the latter husband detests her and writes her a certificate of divorce, puts it in her hand, or sends her out of his house, or if the latter husband dies, who took her as a wife, then the former husband who divorced her must not take her, her back to be his wife. You must not take her back after she has been what? Defiled. For that is an abomination before Jehovah the Lord. This is disgusting, despicable, abhorrent, abominable to the true God of Moses. How then can Allah the Quran be the God of Moses? And how can Muhammad be a prophet like Moses? And you shall not bring sin on the land which Jehovah your God is giving you as an inheritance. And God even says, you do this, you defile the land, and you're going to leave me no choice but to punish you and throw you out of the land. Did you catch it? Muhammad's God says the only way you can take back your divorced wife if someone marries her and defiles her sexually, penetrates her, and then divorces her, then you take her back. A practice that the true God of Moses says is an abomination. It is disgusting. It is shameful. It is dishonorable. You dishonor yourself, the man and the woman, when you do that. You divorced her, and she went to be another man. Don't you take her back. Because this is something dishonorable that a woman that was your wife that you weren't pleased with goes and now sleeps with another man and unites to another man. And now you want to take her back after she's been humiliated and humbled? Shaming her and you? No. This is why Muhammad didn't practice what he preached. Because he knew instinctively, being created by Jesus, having the law of Jesus in art, which he suppressed because he submitted to Satan, his father. He knew it would be disgusting and shameful and dishonorable and unacceptable for his divorced wife, Hafsa to jump in bed and have another man penetrate her sexually, taste her juice, divorce her, and only then take her back as his wife. No way. I ain't going to do that. Not my wives. Yeah, your wives. You. Sucks being you because Allah and his messenger don't give a damn about Muslims. Muslims are nothing in their eyes. They're nothing but property for Allah and his messenger to use and abuse and manipulate like demonic narcissists. There you go. We're done, folks. That's it. Now, for a late nighter, not too bad. We have around over 190. Earlier, we had about 300. May our numbers increase for the glory of Jesus, not for our praise. May all these channels increase in number for the glory of Jesus, not for our praise. But I'm done. So if you have no questions... The StreamYard link is there. If you want to ask me a question on any subject, come on. If not, we're done. Don't forget tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, New York Time, Michigan Time, me and William are going to take to task Anthony Rogers and Tony Costa, slander and attack against the Catholic understanding of Genesis 315. 
showing you they're not the biblical scholars they think they are, even though Tony Costa is much better than Anthony. So no questions. We're done, folks. I'll give you guys a minute. And not I'm done, and it's my cheat day. So, guys, do pray for me. My cheat day started. How you doing, Somali Christian TV? Pray the Lord Jesus will grant my daughters and I divine, miraculous, supernatural, physical safety, protection, security, and health. Ask the Lord to give me the grace to stay healthy, to keep exercising, to keep the weight off, to eat healthy during the week, right? Ask the Lord to allow me to see my daughters grow up to be healthy in love with Jesus if he tarries, and that I leave to be with the Lord before anything happens to them after they grow up, if the Lord tarries, but may he come in our lifetime. Ask the Lord to bring them to me so I can be with them every day and raise them and show them Jesus and ask the Lord to enable me to walk worthy of Jesus, to love Jesus, to obey Jesus, not to be a hypocrite, not to fall into scandal and shame the Lord. And ask the Lord that if he's pleased to bless the ministry, increase our subscribers and viewers, and to continue to bring out that steady support via PayPal and Patreon, if the Lord wants me to do full-time ministry, and then it doesn't decrease, and if the Lord wants to use me, I will continue to serve you new posts, new articles, new sessions. As the Spirit fills me, I'll be filling you to be used as the vessel of the Spirit to teach you because we are disciples of the Spirit. You're not the disciples of me or any man. So glory to the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. If there are no questions, let's wrap it up. In name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Father, have mercy. Son of God, have mercy. Holy Spirit, have mercy. Bless all the brothers and sisters and those in ministry with YouTube channels. Bless Rob Christian, Somali Christian TV, ex-Muslim, Al Fadi, DCCI Ministries, Jay Smith, David Wood, Robert Spencer, Jai Apologetics, Chloe Wackett, <clears throat> Pro-Life, Hussein Meshni, <clears throat> Revelation 22, 13, Psalm underscore 23, Bewitched, the Prophet of Islam, Full Armor Apologetics, and all of them, Lord. There are too many to name. Usama Daktok, Adam Seeker, and keep us in love with you. Make us men and women of integrity to never prostitute ourselves, never fall into any scandal. Love you for your glory. Love you for your praise to strengthen your church and not to do it for status or money. Keep us pure and seal us and fill us with the spirit to do this mightily and never shrink back and never fear even their threats. Even if they kill us, the Holy Spirit, give us power to die for you, but give us the power to live for you, Father to live for you, Lord Jesus, to live for you, Holy Spirit. And Lord, do the miracle, bringing my daughters to me today, not tomorrow, especially in anticipation of my 50th birthday. Be with us, Lord. Keep us in love with you. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. He is Jehovah Almighty in the flesh, the love of the Father, the companion of the Spirit, our Lord God and Savior. May the Son of God wash us, purify us, cleanse us, our loved ones and daughters in his blood and keep us in love with him forever. Father, Son, and Spirit. Maranathe. Lord bless you. See you later.